Coming in hot is presented by Botano. The game starts now. Here are your hosts, Brent Wallace, Jason York, and Bobby Ryan. who was a great guy, defenseman, played with Bobby Orr back in the day. So he's like, well, I'm 60. So I'm like, okay, perfect. I go, I want to be part of this. I uh, played for the Smith Falls Bears, and I have, I have, I have ties to the CCHL. So no brainer. I, I figured I would go, Wally. And I'll, I'll, hold on one sec, Yorkie. Uh, hold on. Alex, can you hear me? Because we're not getting any sound. All right, we good? All right, sorry, Yorkie. Go ahead. Apologies, yeah, yeah. everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure what was going on your end. So anyhow, the plan was to go play a few shifts, be part of a great cause, help raise some money. Uh, so Mark Mathot doesn't come. So we're down to 5D. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I'm like, okay, a few more shifts here. No big problem. By the way, we're still waiting to hear what happened to Math. Guys, we, we were going to send a live video after Great night. Uh, thanks for coming, Matt. Anyhow, I'm sure he has a great excuse. Um, then the game was pretty quick. Uh, Smith Falls alumni dressed a lot of young guys, a couple guys that are still playing U sports. Um, so I'm out there cruising around, and Rick Smith benches himself after the first shift. So we're down to <laughs> we're down to 40. Well, Rick's 75 years old. He's 75, and a pretty quick game. So I go. <laughs> I, I guess I'm going every second shift. So uh, it was uh, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. But uh, yesterday and right after the game, I had the uh, the old ice packs were on the knee. Had a few uh, Coors Lights after the game to ice from inside. But uh, it was it was an awesome night, Wally. Uh, it's the most fans they've had in Smith Falls, um, I think, since the new ownership, who've done a tremendous job, have, have bought the team. We were about 1,000 people. And at the end of the night, we raised over $24,000 for the Craig family and the liver transplant. And, and the best part of it, his son, who plays junior B uh, for the Smith Falls junior B team, uh, played in the game and uh, scored on a Michigan goal. It was, and, and the people in Smith no Falls way. went nuts. Did the Michigan. And then after uh, Brad Brown, who's an awesome guy, former defenseman, played a long time in the NHL, lives in the community now, uh, had the fight at center ice with, with, with the youngster as well, and uh, it, it was great. It was <laughs> it was uh, it was an awesome night for a great cause, and uh, you know, getting the re-injuring the knees is uh, like I would do it again uh, for something like this because this is what this is what our alumni is all about, and, and and you know, when you look at hockey and you see all the hashtags about how toxic hockey is and hockey isn't for everyone, there's so many things like this that they're just it's 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 there's so much more good in hockey. It's unfortunate yep. that everyone's always focused on the bad parts of hockey, but things like this, um, when you get a small community, you go out to help a family, and at the end of the night, it's everyone's a winner. And it was just, it's to me, that's what that's what hockey is all about. Is it's it's helping other people. Uh, and good times, and, and, and well done by all of you. I saw some of the photos, uh, and Brad Brown yeah. is a classic. He lives in my neighborhood. 
And so yeah. we'll always see him what walking the guy. dog. And I'm like, hey, stay on your own side of the tracks here. Yeah, and, and, and um, one more thing. I got to say, uh, Aaron Robertson, who does a ton of stuff for, for the Ottawa Senators community relations, he, yeah. he, he made sure – that we got a Tim Stutzler jersey to auction off that night. And it raised so much money. One of the best players in NHL right now. And you get his jersey there. It was awesome. Uh, and a lot of great guys came out and, and enjoyed it. It's just stuff like that is just, uh, it's awesome. It just makes you feel real good inside to be part of something like that. It is. And well done. Um, all right. So we're waiting for uh, Frank Cervalli to join us. He's a busy, busy man. Of course, he had the news earlier today that uh, Ottawa looking at Colton Pareko from the uh, St. Louis yeah. Blues. So we'll get into that in a sec. Um, before we do that, with, and there's tons to talk about. You were at Chris Neal's retirement. Uh, the yep. Suns are playing extremely well. They're just, they're hovering around playoff spots. We'll get to all that. Uh, as always, this show brought to you by Botano.ca. Go to Botano.ca. Uh, also download the award-winning app. Uh, the, all kinds of uh, online daily uh, betting, if you will. Uh, the game starts now with Botano. Uh, their casino is fantastic. Anyway, online betting casino with Botano.ca. They are uh, a fantastic group. Also by uh, Renfrew Pro Tape. Go to RenfrewPro.com. Uh, Renfrew Pro is the industry standard when it comes to pro hockey tape. They are the ones you'll find inside mall, most of the NHL locker rooms, including the Stanley Cup winners of the last 20 years. Uh, Renfrew Pro continuously evolves its products to ensure that every roll of hockey tape optimizes performance, regardless of the type of hockey stick you use. Renfrew Pro. Feel the game. And by BEI, Bonisher Excavating Inc. Go to BEI. I think Alex, by the way, is on break. It might be the three o'clock break for him, or it's his nap time. <laughs> uh, He's unionized. BEI, Bonisher Excavating. Maybe, yeah. Heavy civil general contractor, <laughs> equipment rentals, aggregate topsoil sales. Listen, they're trying to hire all kinds of people. If you're into construction, if you want to go work for a fantastic company, uh, check out BEI. You're the give them a call, 613-432-1120 or bonishereexcavating.com. Okay. Uh, is do we have frank yet alex no alex is just he's oh. shut down for today yeah. and, 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 uh, he good will... announcement here wally good announcement here by the way yeah i should be having unbelievable wi-fi today made a made a point to go over to staples today and and get a nice connector so there should be no drop-offs today in this show wally all right well Good, because we now have the insider himself uh, joining us Yes, live from Philadelphia. Frank Cervelli, how are you, sir? I'm good, guys. How are you doing? Uh, Pretty good. Well, I think we're good. But as you know, Alex, uh, I'm not sure what he's doing today. So uh, we'll see how this show goes. Uh, Frank, I'm getting right into it. And that is the Colton Pareko news that you had earlier today. The Ottawa Senators are looking at him. Can you give us the update? Yeah, so I, I'm told that the Sens are one of the teams that's inquired with the St. Louis Blues about Colton Pareko's availability. And not really a shock in the sense that this is sort of the white whale that Pierre Dorian has been trying to get in his boat for a long time. Um, and quite literally a whale at six foot six, Colton Pareko, right shot defenseman. Um, you know, St. Louis is in a bit of a tough spot here. They're trying to retool on the fly. I also reported today that they've thrown their hat into the ring for Timo Meyer, and they're looking to leverage the two first round picks that they got in exchange for Ryan O'Reilly and Vladimir Tarasenko. And it makes sense when you think about it, but if you're going to restructure your team and perhaps your salary cap structure, you probably need to move a defenseman and they've got a lot of their guys in their top four, all four had not only have no trade clauses, but have significant term and dollars attached to their names. Colton Preco is just in the first year of an eight year deal that pays him six and a half million dollars for the next seven. So it's a significant investment that any team would be taking on. I'm told that the ask from the Blues to a team like the Sens is we'll send you Pareko, you send us one of your younger NHL-ready defensemen. That might be a tough pill for the Sens to swallow that have been building you know, all these years to kind of get to this moment. I don't know where they end up coming out on it. Let me ask you this, Frank. Let me ask you this. Um... So many teams want a right shot defenseman. Uh, what's Pranko, 29 years old? He's 29 mm -hmm. years old. I know he's got a lot of term left. Why on earth? <laughs> I know they have a lot of defensemen, but he's. I, I watch Pranko play. He's mobile. He moves the puck. 
uh, talked to him off the ice many times, Frank. Oh, what, what a great human being, like great person. I'm sure a great community guy. I, I don't know, but I would think he's the type of guy. Why on earth would they want to trade him? I know they have other guys, but to me, you don't trade a guy like that. Well, I, I think the answer to your question lies in his game the last number of years. They won the Stanley Cup in 2019, and he was such a big driving force in that. Yeah. But their defense and the support around him has really eroded. You lose Jay Bomeister, you know, you have Alex Petrangelo walk, and you're in a spot suddenly where his game is exposed a little bit, and he hasn't quite played at the level that he was at for the years prior. And I don't know how much of that, again, has to do with him or the people that are around him. And that's one of those tough yeah. things that can be to decipher. And I think the other part, too, is – they're going to have a hard time moving some of the other contracts that they have. Pareko is one guy that right at this exact juncture, you have value in that you can get something back for. And so that's one part of it. And the other is that you mentioned his age and the term on his deal. Well, he, mm -hmm. that goes until his age 37 season. Yorkie, you've been around a long time. Guys that are six foot six, they tend to not really age all that well. And so if you have... Yeah. You know, you're, you're stuck with Colton Pareko at 36, 37. You know, you're probably going to be in a pretty tough spot. And I think the Blues are starting to see some of the writing on the wall when it comes to that and are going to have to make a tough decision. Yeah, yeah. No, very okay. tough. No, I just uh, – have you ever talked to him off the ice? Sorry, sorry, Wally. Frank, have you ever talked to yeah. Pareko off the ice? So I don't have any relationship with him, but I know a lot of people in Edmonton where he's from. Um, you mentioned community, an unbelievable guy that's active there, loves it. Yeah. Um, yeah. He also has the no trade clause too. So before we even yeah. go too deep down the path yeah. of, of Colton Pareko, I don't even know where Ottawa stands on his list, if they're on or off or what that means. So you could yeah. always yeah. temper your expectations when it comes to that as well. Yeah, good point. Um. Frank, can you then clarify something? Because on uh, Cap Friendly, it says, uh, starting July 2028, player submits a 15-team no-trade list. Uh, I did not look at that, but I can look real quick. I know that one, that was the big hang-up for the Blues as they've gone through this sort of exercise to reshape their top okay. four is that – all of their guys seem to have uh, some kind of no trade. So it's a full no trade right now, Wally, for these first six years of the deal. Oh. And then the last oh, two, right. it shifts I to a modified that. no trade with the 15-team no trade list. Well, uh, w so, Wally, I'll give you, uh, I'll give you some, uh, for Sens fans, some, some hope for Colton Pranko. He went to University of Alaska, right? So I don't think weather's, weather's going to be... <laughs> A complaint for him. If so, I don't want to go to Ottawa. It's too cold. Like, here's a guy. Well, he's from Edmonton where it's, where it's not warm either. He's from Edmonton, went to Alaska, and um, yeah, he, do you know he only had one offer too, fellas? He had no other schools interested in him. I go, why'd you go to Alaska? He's like, I didn't have any other offers. It's a pretty crazy story. He was such a late bloomer. He had the one offer. He just kept getting better and better, and now he's a, a great defenseman. Okay, so Frank, let me point this out then. Because uh, you talked about, and we've always talked about the heavy contract. Everybody just looks at the six and a half mil cap hit, the cap hit. But in his last three years, it's down to 4.8 million real dollars. So we always talk that we can't move these deals at the end of contracts. And then we see that, you know what? Some of them do get moved with, and I'll go to Dion Funa for Ottawa fans. Yes, you have to eat some of the contract. But if you can get a guy who, A, you have to overpay for a right-handed shot defense. I think everybody will admit that. B, who's six six and what you've been looking for, I think you make that deal and worry about down the road later. Do you not? I don't know how antsy the Sens are to get there. Obviously, pretty antsy to get in the playoff picture, but are they ready and willing to give up? I, I don't know. Again, the specific ask, yeah. but you know, you're talking um, Jacob Berner, Docker. Eric Brandstrom, Lassie Tom, like go through the list. Like, are you ready to give up on, on one of those guys in order to find out? That's the question. I don't know what your appetite for it. I would think, have to think that Sanderson is a non-starter. Don't even bother asking, but yeah. outside of that, like who that's, that's the type of, of defenseman that St. Louis is looking for in return. Yeah. Well, non-starter. I'm okay they with would, that. They would, 
Doing doing who, Wally? Sorry. You, I, I would give anybody, any of those. Listen, you have to overpay to get a right-hand shot top 4D unless you're going to develop one, and they're not Agreed, developing yeah. one in the next future for Which, them to get into the playoffs in the next three years. You've got to so pay. Talking, so we're talking like like a Docker, a Lassie Thompson, someone like that? Yes. Absolutely. I'm okay with that. Absolutely. Absolutely, I, Frank. I, I agree with what you said. Jake Sanderson, no starter. <laughs> That's a non-starter right there. But one of those guys, throw another prospect. I, I love the if they if you can get a guy like that. I know it's the, like you said the long-term deal, but man, he immediately. The great thing about him, too, fellas, is he's not really a first power play guy. So he comes in and he's a top four, more of a shutdown more of a puck mover because they don't need another power play guy. They need exactly what Pareko brings to the table. Size can play, can skate and can make a pass. So I, I, man, this, this is exciting. If, uh, if there's uh, if there's actually some legs behind this. Um, Frank, let me uh, switch to what else Ottawa may be looking to do. And I, and I, we, I guess we could go to the Tyler Mott deal. They just moved out a small piece uh, I'm not sure it really moves the radar or the needle very much to bring in Julian Goche, who is a prospect at best. Um, are you hearing anything else, perhaps? And I know they've talked about Alex Dabrinkit not being moved or Travis Hamanick not being moved, but if somebody comes with the right deal, anybody can be moved, no? Yeah, I mean, I would say that I don't think they have very much interest in in moving any of those guys that you just talked about. I, I want to challenge you, though, on the notion of it being so incredibly difficult to acquire a right shot defenseman at this exact moment in time. And the team that I want to point you to is the Los Angeles Kings and the guys that they have under contract that are on my trade targets board, Sean Walker and Matt Roy, uh, two pretty capable NHL defensemen that have one more year of term after this that are 27 and 28. They move well. Their cap hits are really reasonable at 265 and 315. Mm -hmm. The Kings, I, I had one NHL GM say to me this week that the Kings are the NHL's right shot bullpen, that they've got so many <laughs> extra guys. Sean Dersey is a right shot guy that's playing on the left mm -hmm. side. They've got Jordan Spence, who's been a point per game guy in AHL Ontario, that he's ready to come up. Brant Clark is one of their big draft picks. Number eight overall in 2021, he is a right shot guy. They don't have room for all these right shot guys. And sometimes teams make too big of a deal about the, the righty and lefty split. And Yorkie, you'd be able to talk to that better than me. But I, I'd say that when you look at um, a team to focus on in terms of moving some of those guys, that'd be the team that I'd be calling if I was Pierre Dorian. Yeah, it's crazy when you when you when you ram Ryan ram off those names, Frank. Because Clark Clark is going to get an opportunity to make that team next year. He's mm -hmm. like he's he he's a type of guy I think with an opportunity. Local and boy. All of a sudden, yeah, local boy. <laughs> Good player. I actually watched him play play with my son and Barry, so I got a chance to watch him a lot. Um, but yeah, that's that's some interesting options over there in L.A. But uh, yeah, we'll. we'll uh, We'll see what happens with LA because they're going to have to move somebody. And the question is, when will it happen yeah. at this deadline? Will they wait until the summer? You know, they're yeah. a team that's squarely in the playoffs. And, you know, you yeah. always hear you can never have too many defensemen when it comes to the playoffs. Yeah. We know that it's an untenable situation for next season, given what they have coming. So it's happening at some point. Do they take the value now and then? do something similar to St. Louis and leverage whatever they get into going and getting something else that's going to help them. Do they address their goaltending situation? There's lots of things to focus on. Uh, two quick guys to ask you about before we let you go, Frank. One is, well, Cam Talbot. Do you expect him to be an Ottawa Senator past March 3rd? Well, to answer that question, you tell me how healthy is he, and I'll give you an answer because if he's pretty close to 100%, or getting there, then I think there's a real good chance that the Sens end up moving him. I think they've been pushing him to get back so that they can try and move him. Um, so I would say if he's able to stay upright, that there's probably a pretty good shot that he gets moved, but I want to see it first. And I know teams want to see it first. 
Fair enough. I think because uh, they just sent Kevin Mandelizi back, I think yeah. he might be back and practicing tomorrow, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. And it might just be a paper move. But uh, that's one guy. The other one, and it gets a lot in our chat today uh, on our YouTube channel, is Mackenzie Weger. And he just signed the eight year deal in Calgary uh, or seven year deal. I think. What do you think? Like, it's a rumor that doesn't go away in Ottawa because he's a local guy and they wanted him before he got dealt to, or signed in Florida. Uh, is there any chance that Calgary might move Mackenzie Weger? Not to my knowledge. Um, I think they're pretty set on trying to fix some of the chemistry issues that they've had there. Uh, something's been off with that Calgary team all season long, and I don't have any indication that they would entertain uh, moving Mackenzie Weger at this point. Yeah, I, I, I didn't think so, but I figured I'd throw it out there just in case. Um, and did do you make much of the Tyler Mott move, by the way, to bring I, – I, I don't know why they did it, to be honest with you. Uh, I guess they get back a player and a pick, but I like Tyler Mott. He was only making 1.35, and he's signed for uh, next year. Uh, why did uh, why did they have to move him? Well, they got a lottery ticket in return in Julian Gauthier and another lottery <laughs> ticket that's going to be a lot harder to cash in uh, that seventh-round pick that can become a sixth if the Rangers win a round. I think the bigger question is why didn't the Rangers just re-sign Tyler Mott to begin with? Cause it's not like he was <laughs> earning a ton of money in Ottawa anyway. And if you're the Rangers, you traded a fourth to get him last year. And now a sixth that could be a seventh and Julian Gauthier this time around to make it happen. I don't know. Just seems like a cat chasing its yeah. tail for a team that had cap space all season long. Well, teams, yeah. teams always do teams all, Teams always do that in the off season. Like, ah, you, you, you disregard the older player because you think you got something better. And Mott, the thing with Mott, he's you know, exactly what you got. but he, he, but you just think he just is what he is. He's not going to get any better. But then the more you watch him, the more he grows on you. And then that's why coaches love him. And he ends up being a guy that kills penalties. Uh, but I, I don't mind that. I don't mind the move, guys, that uh, that Dorian did because you look at Goche, he's six four. Um, could he potentially be a power forward? You never know. Like you never know. And they're not a big team up front to begin with, guys. Ottawa, they don't have a lot of size. Um, so yeah, I, like I said, lottery pick, lottery player. Maybe he turns into something, and you know what you got in Mott and. I, I think it's a it's it's a it's a move that could turn out to be something, and it's a, who knows at this point. But I didn't mind his game, fellas, the other night. I thought he was pretty good. Uh, it's yeah, it's a small sample size, but he played ten it's minutes. Uh, he had two shots. Yeah. I, I he's I just don't I don't know. I'm not excited about the deal. I would I would rather have had Tyler Mott in my lineup if we're trying to make a push here for the postseason. Um, Frank, is there any other Ottawa news that we can bother you about uh, before you head off? Because I know you're a busy man. If I had it, I would give it to you. Um, I think the <laughs> Sens are working hard to try and be in a spot where they can be as competitive as possible while also being realistic about where they are in the standings, that they're not going to mm. be trading away pieces to sell off you know, in a significant way. But if they can improve, they're going to try and do that as well. I just... I feel like so many of the things that they're looking at are really off-season focused that, you know, it's hard to really be a buyer when your team isn't in it based on what these prices are. Yep, uh, absolutely. Oh, and Carolina, uh, you were at the outdoor game. Do you still enjoy them? Do, are they still the same exciting vibe or has it just become too common now for hockey games? But it did look I didn't. Fun. I did an outdoor game with you once upon a time uh, in Ottawa, yep. actually. And that was some fun. Yeah, we uh, all know how that turned out. Yeah, that yeah, was cold. So, that was cold. It's among the coldest I've ever been. Um, I would say this was the 21st outdoor game that I've covered, and it was in the top two or three. And so we all kind really? of bellyache about it like, oh, it doesn't really move the no. needle. Who even knew that this game was going to be happening? Toronto, they were so focused on O'Reilly coming in. That game was on hockey night against the Habs. No one is paying attention to the stadium series game in Carolina, except you fly in there. They have 57,000 seats sold. They sell out this college football stadium. You walk into the parking lot and it's absolute mayhem. You've got the grills going. 
you know, the sweet, sweet smell of Carolina barbecue is wafting in the Carolina pines and they've got ice luges, beer pong, everything going. It's a full on college game day experience. You go in the stadium and they've got the marching van, the student section, all these different things going on. And it was a 10 hour party. So I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought the presentation was good. I thought everything looked good on TV. And I think that's kind of a reminder to the rest of us. It's like, first off, don't be the typical jaded sports reporter, one. And two, you know, this actually matters in a, in a market. You know, you've got a place where this was, Stadium Series was on their high rises and skyscrapers. Like, it was a big deal there. People have been waiting for this for a long time. And I'm curious to see where it goes next, not in the sense of, you know, where's the next stadium series, but how does Carolina now take this college football stadium that's in the parking lot of their arena and make this a regular type thing, a once a year type thing that they can build on this kind of tradition because they had a club college hockey game played there last night, yep. 25,000 people. Wow. Club college hockey. That's incredible. That's, that's incredible. Crazy. I, and you know what? And Carolina is very underrated. Um, one, I've done an all-star game there. I thought it was fantastic. And I did the Stanley Cup final there. Uh, tw- I want to say twice, but at least once. I thought the it, it was very well. Like the parking lot was always full. As you say, it's like a college game day all the time. Uh, I understand the rink is in the middle of nowhere like Ottawa. And so I get that. But I love covering games in Carolina, uh, minus the wind tunnel that they have inside. Yeah, that that's not good for your hair. <laughs> I have to put in extra gel to cover those games. Uh, Frank, exactly. I appreciate you stopping by. Uh, thank you. Uh, we'll talk again soon and uh, good luck on uh, March 3rd. I know it's yeah. an exciting day for you for sure. Thank you guys. Thanks, good to Frank. be with you. See ya. Have a good one. So yeah, there goes Frank Cervelli. By the way, check him out on Daily Faceoff. Uh, he's got obviously the trade bait board. Uh, he does a ton of work, plus uh, his daily show, Daily Faceoff Rundown on YouTube. It is uh, extremely well done. He's got tons of information. Um, Frank and I have traveled a lot of places together, so it's been fun uh, hanging out with him why, all the time. Why did enjoy, Why did you start Why did you start laughing when he said the typical jaded sports reporter? <laughs> <laughs> all I can think so, about is one guy just <laughs> just grumpy sitting at the out there. Oh, it's cold here. You know you You know who you're so starting true, to remind right? me of? I finally figured out oh. who you remind me of, Wally. Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Great movie, right? Great movie. Steve Martin? You, Steve are Martin? Steve, oh. you are Steve You are Steve Martin in Planes, Trains, just just like complaining and bitter the whole time. Always always finding the negative thing on thing. That's you right there. You're Steve Martin from Planes, Trains. Frank called you out for it too, subliminally. Wow. That's you. You kind of look like him too, right? I, Gray well, hair. I didn't think he was talking about me. Well, so, you Steve, knew he was Steve talking Martin's about you. I thought he could be talking about lots of us. We're all jaded and cranky. Hey, how good is that movie, by the we, way? Planes, Trains? One of my favorites. Well, now I hate it. Now I won't be able to ever watch it again. Well, you hate but everything. I love John Candy. <laughs> That's not true. Why isn't your, you know what? This should be about the time your Wi-Fi goes down. Um, no, it's good. I'm that's full power, baby. So, <laughs> hey, um, by the way, uh, that's pretty – with Colton Paranko, if he's in play right now, could you not think – if you were going to go around the NHL right now and try and find a defenseman that pretty well suits all the needs and checks all the boxes for the Ottawa Senators, is it not Colton Paranko? I, listen, I'm all in. Yeah, I, I, I would take Colton Pareko. I think, by the way, you can move that deal at the end of his contract. And I understand yeah. it's six and a half million. Uh, but I think that you can get that deal moved. Contracts are are able to be moved. Do you have to pay sometimes? Absolutely. But so, if you want to win now, if you're on the cusp and you have a chance to f- to finalize that top four with Shabbat, let's say Zub, and, or Pareko, and then you've got Sanderson and Zub, Right, I, I'm. That's fan. I'm in. And sign me and up. And here's the thing. And and here's the thing. People might say, "Well, he's not quite the same player he was when St. Louis won the Stanley Cup." That's because when St. Louis won the Stanley Cup, he was playing in exactly the role 
he should be playing because he's not he's not a number one guy uh back then the number one guy was alex petrangelo and then prankel slots in real nice maybe playing alongside your number one guy imagine if you got a guy like prankel to be thomas shabbat's partner do you know how much pressure that would take off thomas shabbat it would be unbelievable or you play him with sanderson um and i listen we're just spitballing here but this is i get excited when i hear a name like this because he doesn't have to come to a team like ottawa and have to be the number one guy you're gonna you're gonna overpay him a little bit but you have to do that for a defenseman like that and it's not that it's not that much of an overpay either like what's he at is he at what's his cap at six nine around six nine i think six five um it's six five, so I know it's a lot of money, but it's not a it's not a huge overpayment. I just like no, they don't really have a defenseman. Well, not many teams do that are six six. And there's a term that hockey people like to use. They call it long. Like he's long. So when he's out there, he's got the long stick. It's tough for for uh, for forwards to get around him. He can get the pucks quick, and he can. To me, he can really help what the Ottawa Senators are lacking in, and that's a guy to get to a puck make a good first pass, and he can support, give you a little bit of offense, but he would be a perfect, perfect 3-4 yep. guy for Ottawa. Well, like he's – by the way, uh, he's averaging 23-19 yeah. uh, in ice times, and he was 23-34 last year, 21, 23, 22, and, 20. Like he, he logs a lot of minutes. He can play a number one spot. Does does he yeah. have the foot speed that maybe not at 6'6", six, six, but my – he's like, <laughs> Nobody. I don't, know, I don't want to compare him to Chris Pronger just yet, but when you it's think not of Chris Pronger on that blue line at six six and being able to handle people, he wasn't the great skater either. That's yeah, it's. Like, I want is I want listen, that on my lineup. There's no hitting any. There's really not a lot of hitting in the NHL. What he does is he takes away time and space with his reach, his length, and yeah, yeah is he twenty three minutes? Can he be a number one guy? And for Ottawa, he'll just like I said. Shabbat, he's your power play guy. You have already four, four, four forwards on your power play on both units. You don't need offense room. You need puck nope. uh, breakouts. You need passing, and you need a guy that can defend. So, and he's and hey, he's he's been on a Stanley Cup winning team, so he's got experience. And uh, I man, that's exciting. So, uh, rumor right now, but uh, something interesting uh, for a little bit of water cooler talk right now. And take this as a PSA. If you have young children and you want them to play hockey, make them shoot mm-hmm. right-handed and play defense. <laughs> that is the golden ticket to the National Hockey League. That, oh. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, I got right, two like, boys. Right? Yeah, I got two boys. I got, One's a right shot D, the other's left. I tried so hard. I go, come here. You got to shoot right. You're going to shoot right. <laughs> he wouldn't do it. He kept going back to left. I... But... I tried oh, to get, bro. so I bought my kid a right-handed stick, but he would already play. He was at seven and he was like, Oh, I'll try to shoot right-handed. I uh, couldn't do it, but he, <laughs> like, yeah, he tried. I failed him as a parent, not making him do it when he was four. Cause if I, and I didn't know, like, I just wasn't, I didn't know. So I feel like I failed him. Um, yeah, you're angry. So we'll see how that plays out. I, I listen there. They are only five. Is it five points now? I change there. Like they're in a spot here, right? But that schedule yeah. coming up and yeah. the start that they had is coming into so, play now. So before we get to the is. schedule, Yorkie, yeah, let's just show uh I call it failure to launch. In the first 19 games, they sat six, twelve, and one, and they were 31st overall in the league in points percentage. And then you can see all the numbers. The penalty kill was 21. Uh, save percentage was 22nd, like goals against was 28th. Since then, they're 21, 13, and 3, and that includes uh, the game against Boston. Before that, they were ninth overall. They're 10th overall in the league in points percentage. Their power play and penalty killer, 2 and 3. They are f- like, they, they have turned it around drastically, but the problem still remains that start. And now we see what it's what's paying off. Now, also to point out, as good as they've been, uh, one of the top teams above them is the Buffalo Sabres, who they're trying to yep. pass to make it yep. into the playoffs. 
So again, you're seeing, even if they're playing really well, they still have teams that are yeah. playing just as well. Why it makes it so difficult to get into the postseason. Well, it's, it's been, I've been doing a lot of scoreboard watching lately and it's been interesting because a lot of the teams that are in the wild card positions like Pittsburgh, Washington, New York, they're, they're very inconsistent right now. And, and they have made up some ground on those teams, Washington in particular. Um, but you look at a team like Detroit, they've got back to back games coming up against Detroit fairly soon, which are going to be huge games. I, I, I ran, I ran the numbers the other day and I think they've got 26 games left. They're probably going to need roughly give or take around the 95 point range, right? Somewhere around there. You, you, I went back yep. last night and did a little bit of homework and looked, well, some years it's got in, the abacus out. Yeah. Like some years it was a hundred points needed. And then I went back four or five years and I looked over in the Western conference and I saw a couple teams got in in the low nineties. So I just, let's just call it 95 to get to that magic number of 95. I just threw out a record of let's just call it 16 wins. Maybe you get five loser points and you have five uh, losses. So 16, five and five, maybe it's, whatever, less over, you could run the numbers over, but that's kind yep. of a picture of what it's going to take for the Ottawa Senators. Is that possible? Well, anything is possible. I can tell you what, I was on the Ottawa Senators team in uh, 1997 that we made up, I think it was almost close to that amount of ground. Um, I don't think we had the three point games back then. And it took us right until the last game of the season to beat the Buffalo Sabres. So do I think that's going to happen this year for the Ottawa Senators? I think it's going to be very difficult because the other thing I did was I went and looked at their schedule. And they're, they got some tough, tough matchups coming up. They've got that Western Road String coming up where they got to go into Vancouver, uh, who's got talk at coach, and they're going to be a tough team. They got Edmonton, Calgary. They got Tampa. They got Colorado. They got Car it's, There's a lot of tough games. So do I think they're going to do it? Probably not. It's, it's going to be very tough. And I, it is what it is. But to me, does that mean this season's going to be a failure for the Ottawa Senators? No, I, I don't. I don't think it is, Wally, because they've put themselves into a position where you're now going to get a chance to evaluate guys where they're not. They're not mathematically out of the out of the out of the race right now. So you're going to see guys playing when there's a little more pressure, there's a little more on the line, and the more they win, the more they're going to get to feel that feeling. And I'll tell you the 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 best thing when it's all said and done that's going to come out of this Ottawa Senators season, Wally, is they've got a perennial superstar on their hand right now in Tim Stutzla. So people can say this season, if they don't make it, it's going to be a failure. It's negative. I look at it this way. Brady Kachuk, we all knew what they had in Brady Kachuk. The guy's a leader. Can't wait to see when he plays uh, in a playoff series. I sent a tweet out the other night. Did you see that? That, that four check yep. that he did on Hampus Lindholm? Like that's just a sample size of what this kid's going to do when he gets into a, like, I feel sorry for the other team's defense, but to me, it was awful losing Josh Norris, but with yep. that opportunity to jump in and be a number one center right away, look at what this has done to Tim Stutzla. So I, the experience he's gotten and part of the reason you, you talked about that slow start that they had this year, people forget that, he had never really played the position. Well, he hadn't as a number one guy. He's had to learn on the job. He had some big miscues defensively early on, some lot, some lot, all the things that young players go through, and he's still going to have those. But to see where Stutzla's game is right now, man, oh, man, how are you feeling if, 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 uh, if, if you are some of the teams that passed on him right now? Like, it's, it's not even close to the three players that are picked. Not. I know there's still, there's, there's a no. lot of, there's a lot, there's a lot of runway left, but my, oh my, yeah. I, I am to the point Wally, where I think he's got a chance to be a top five guy in the league. Well, so since, uh, since the, uh, the turnaround or the board that we showed uh, since November 25th, uh, he is tied for 19th in league and scoring with 40 points. Uh, I think yeah. it's 32 or 33 games, right? Like he's, he's, He's certainly very entertaining to watch. And as you said, like one of the top five guys I'd pay to watch play the game because you don't yeah, know what he's yeah. going to do. And he and he it's, genuinely <laughs> just loves to score goals or I, at least make I plays. I don't think he knows half the time. <laughs> he just gets the puck and right. will 
will create something out of nothing and he'll do it in the tightest spaces. The, the way he's able to maneuver, like for example, if he takes the puck into the O zone and he's getting pressured by the defenseman of the forward and he's got nowhere to go, his edge work and ability to maneuver in a tight space while handling the puck and then distribute it, it's next level. And I just, I love watching him and just the, just the way you see. And, and uh, I'll just a short story here, Wally. Um, I know we're going to get into this later, Chris Neal's night. Yep. After the game was over, this was really nice. A lot of the alumni were up there after the game and the current team came up, which I think, by the way, that was a great move by the organization to do that. Make sure the, the players come up and, and see Chris Neal. And, and we got a chance to mingle. Stutzla is just, the kid lights up the room when he comes in. Big smile. Um, and uh, it's just, to me, he's a kid that uh, to get him at four, where they got him and what he's doing, it's uh, it's been unbelievable to watch. Uh, before people yell at you, three. They draft him third overall. Sorry, um, three. Okay, sorry. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> I, uh, I'm not I a draft expert. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, Brady was four, right? Was Brady four? Fourth, correct. Yeah. That's that's where I got the mix. Yeah, Brady was four. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it is, and it, he is fun to watch. I I somehow, and you can tell me because you've you were doing a lot of uh, analyzing analyzing during uh, this time is Matt Duchesne. I think of yeah. him in tight, in small areas like Matt Duchesne, who probably was one of the best I've seen being able to handle a puck and get out of danger. Uh, that to me yeah. is kind of a, a Tim Stutzla-esque. Do you know what the big difference is? Duchesne was, was, was a very low threat to shoot the puck outside a 10-foot zone because like shot wasn't good enough where you had to respect it. But I agree, in tight, very, very deceptive, very um, easy to have the ability to roll off checks and really slippery. Um, and I also, I think, uh, I'd say Stutzel is just through the neutral zone, um, better skater and more a threat with the puck. Yep. But you know what? He's younger. That's why. I wonder if Matt Duchesne at 21 was flying through the neutral zone too. Probably. Probably. He had pretty good wheels. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Player. Uh, Excited uh, player. Young Zachary. I meant to ask about Patrick Kane to Frank Cervelli and I apologize. Um, yeah. Is uh, the other thing with the Sens, and you talked about that schedule, like starting Friday, they play four of in five, including those two back to backs against Detroit. That is a tough haul yeah. to do, right? Like that there's back to back and then there's that four and five stretch. Yeah. No, it's it's nice when you if you can get on a roll though. I always found, and I'll go back to when we were uh, on that heater we had to get into when the Senators first made the playoffs in ninety six, ninety seven. When you're playing every second day, or you got two and three, three and four, you kind of want to keep playing. And yeah, oh, okay. your body's a little a little tired, but when it's versus if you're losing and you got all those games, Wally, it's a little bit yeah. different. But when you think yeah, you're going fair. well. When things are going well, uh, it's it's nice to keep going and you're in the groove. And I'll tell you, most guys hate practicing. Most guys hate being on the ice for practice. At yes. least I did. I'd rather play the games because um, that's what it's all about. That's what you get paid for. And uh, this time of year, too, when when you're still technically, mathematically in the race, it's exciting. Like this is this is when it gets fun to play hockey, when there's a little more on the line. So um, I've never, and I've said this before on the show, I know travel is tough, but it's never been better. <laughs> like you, you know how Correct. the teams travel. You know how the teams travel. Yep. It is nice. You're. It's not like you're staying in super eights. Like and you're not flying. And you're not flying commercial. No. So just and, to give people an idea, play the game. Hop on the bus that's ready, waiting, and warmed up for you. Go to the airport. Drive right up to the plane. Usually, you don't have to go through a terminal very often. You get out of the bus, right up on the plane. Sit down. Land, your car is started and ready and waiting for you. When you get off the plane, you drive home. There is n no waiting. The customs comes on the plane. You hand them the customs card and you go. It's it's don't very, forget. it's a don't lot forget. quicker than flying commercial, I can tell well, you. Well, don't forget, when you, land, when you land in the city and you, number one, 
you never touch your equipment. You never touch anything. Everything's taken care of. You get off the plane, onto the bus, you drive to your five-star hotel, you walk in the door, you're not waiting in line to check into the hotel. All the keys, all the keys are nicely set out on a nice table. And on that table is a basket of fruit, some chocolate chip cookies, grab a cookie. Water. There will be some water there too, up to your room, which is usually a beautiful hotel and you get a great night's sleep. So, and and if it's back to back, you don't have a pregame skate. So call me crazy. I felt better on the road. I felt I felt better. I love the road. Uh, and uh, also, too, if you're, I've said this before, if you're a young guy, you actually eat better on the road because you're, you're on more of a regimented schedule. You got to get up. You got to be at, the, at practice instead of if, even on an off day. Um, you're eating on the plane. And oh, the other thing, too, yep. you're not eating regular airplane food. <laughs> It's a catered, beautiful meal on the plane with everything. Yeah, Man, I'm, I'm missing. I'm missing being in the NHL right now. <laughs> it's everything oh. you want. Oh God! It's probably so good. when people it, ask me what I what, what I miss about being in the league, I actually say the travel because <laughs> you get treated so well. Yep, it's great. Yep. And you don't have to wear your seatbelt. Your table tray doesn't have to go up. Oh, you just yeah. take. Yes, it. you could still By be working way, on your laptop. All that, all that bullshit about not having your phones on is an old wise tale. Everyone's on their phones, they're texting, they're talking. My God, guys used so to. So funny surf story about that. <laughs> Do you, uh, Joey Juno, as you know, went to I think it was RPI. He was yeah. literally a, I think he was like a rocket engineer, if I'm not mistaken. He built a built plane. Built his own with airplane. His dad. Yeah. So super smart he, guy. Uh, so early on when we just had cell phones that right were coming out and uh, he was on the plane and the flight attendant said, you have to turn your phone off. He goes, no, you don't. And they're like, yes, sir. You have to turn your phone off. He goes, no. And she's like, it interferes with, he's like, no, it doesn't. Listen, I built an airplane. <laughs> anyway, he, he, <laughs> I he built an airplane. Off, he, I trying... should know. <laughs> you know what? It's yeah. just an, it's just another thing for airline attendants to bug you about. <laughs> When you get on the plane, <laughs> because they now don't everything's do it done. Uh, thank God. They, yeah, they don't do it anymore. Um, okay, so I want to uh, get to Chris Neal jer- uh, number retirement, yeah. Jersey retirement, I guess. Uh, a couple of things, and one, I just want to say this now before I forget. I don't care what anybody else in any other market has to say about anything the organizations do. If the Nashville Predators want to hang sixty-five banners in their arena, go right ahead. If you want to have a a statue to Dustin Brown, you go right ahead. I don't care. In fact, I applaud it. If the senators yeah. want to retire Chris Neal's number, they can. It doesn't have any impact on anybody else. So it, please, if you're from yeah. a different team, it has no impact on you. What Chris Neal so, did in this community, what he did for this team, for this organization, is immeasurable. And I'm okay with him having his number hanging proudly in the rafters because there are three people mm-hmm. you often think of when it comes to the Ottawa Senators, and it's Daniel Alfredson, Chris Phillips, and Chris Neal. Very well said, Wally. Very well said. A thousand games with one organization is so tough to do, and let alone do it the way that, that, that Chris did. when, Especially in early on in his career when there was a lot more fighting going on, that is a tough, tough way to make a living. And here's the thing. I give a lot yes. of thought, and I agree with you. Here's People will say, if you're a Montreal Canadiens fan, well, our bar is so high. We don't do things. Okay. Talk to me in 30 years when you might not, like, who knows what you're going to do. It is so hard to win a Stanley Cup now in today's game with the amount of teams. <laughs> okay, this just in. It's not the original yeah. six anymore. It's way harder to win a cup. So you have to, if you want to take pride in your organization, if you want to engage your fan base with the history of your hockey club, you have to celebrate some of the good and some of the history of your club. So how do you do that? Well, you have to have events and milestone recognitions where the fan base can identify with the team. There hasn't been a Stanley Cup yet. So how do you do something like that? Well. Here's the thing I like about Chris Neal and why I believe, Wally, it was the right thing to do. Ottawa, people can argue, debate this. We always have a chip on our, our, our shoulders about Toronto and bigger cities. 
we're kind of like that smaller city. We don't like Toronto that much. One thing Chris Neal is, he's the guy that sticks up for the little guy. He's the guy that'll take on the bully. He'll he'll stand up for what he thinks is right. And I was watching some of the videos. The ceremony was tremendous what they put on for Chris. Uh, we can get into that later. But I, saw, I just saw and got reminded of some of his fights. For example, when Zidane Ochera left to, to go play in Boston, people will have all the different reasons why he left. But he chose to play in Boston instead of staying with the Ottawa Senators, right? So there's Chris Neal. He has two big fights against a guy who's six foot nine and when you watch those fights it's again it's like the little guy it's like david versus goliath so there's that series as well we've all talked about when 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 chris neal came in against the rangers he only played a couple minutes but there were little moments in his career when you can say to chris neal that's what ottawa appreciates in a player like chris he had the fights he stuck up and he was a pretty good player too. To play a thousand games in the league, you have to be a good player. And it's a great story. Six round draft pick, uh, spent some time in the minors. So I like it because this game, everyone talks about points. Everyone talks about stats. There are other intangibles in the game that are so important that guys in the re- in the dressing room realize it. Guys that do it every day, understand it. And people that really know and understand the game get it too. So I I thought it was great, very well done. And, uh, and it was well-deserved. Yeah. The other thing too, and I, this is so Neeler and I love him for it. Neeler was a, (laughs) he got the entertainment value of the game. He understood that what they did was entertaining. And so when he left and he's raising his arms to fire everybody up. And then he's waving at the top yeah, like yeah. he's the president of the United States stepping off Air Force yeah. One. I loved it because it got everybody yeah, involved. Yeah. The energy he brought, yeah. just like he was on the ice, he brought to the Jersey retirement. And I loved it. I loved every so, second that he wanted to celebrate that night. Like he, he, A, was emotional, but he waved to the yeah. crowd. He brought you in to that ceremony. 100%. 100%. And here's the other thing, too. If teams are going to have such a high standard, like I said earlier, you're not going to retire any jerseys. There's going to be, like, look at the Vancouver Canucks, for for example. They've never won a Stanley Cup. They've been around a lot longer. They're taking pride in things they have to. Every team, you have to know your fan base. And I think one thing that Ottawa's done right this summer is they've re-engaged the fan base. They've had, what, 10-plus sellouts so far, They've done a nice job of bringing back the fans. And how do you do that? Correct. The alumni is a huge part of that. You got to recognize and celebrate your past. And I agree. Montreal Canadiens, Toronto Maple Leafs, pr- prime examples of that. And we'll say, well, they won before. Well, statistically, it was easier to win Stanley Cups back then. That's a fact. That, that's a fact. Um, there was less teams. And so that is, uh, you can't deny that and not saying they weren't great teams, not saying they didn't deserve those cups, but it's, it's different now. So I like it. Um, you're going to see more and more teams doing this, uh, celebrating as it's, it's, um, Hey, it's, it's, it's good for the brand. I, I, mean, I jokingly say we should build a statue to Chris Neal and the rest of the league would just lose their collective minds. That no. would be entertaining. Um, I, so here's, here, what, here's where I draw the line. Here's where I draw the line. The statue for me, you got to do the statue is, uh, <laughs> I'm not a stat. I'm not a statue guy. <laughs> you got it. Wayne Gretzky you got it. deserves a, a statue. Mario there, Lemieux, right? Bobby Orr, Gordie Howe. Yes. All you can, you can give them whatever you can name buildings. I don't care. They can get whatever they want. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably where i stop the statue is yeah I, I hold the statue pretty high wally you gotta i'm with you yeah. on that or one. you know what rocky richard he's got one too i'm okay with that yeah yeah I, boy yeah, but yeah anyway well, hey, Montreal, each his own if the la kings yeah. think that they should have a statue to dustin brown then you Whatever. build it Fill your next boots. time make it Fill look like boots. dustin brown yeah oh i haven't seen it, it doesn't look like him <laughs> 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 you remember the uh oh who's the soccer uh, player now i can't not ronaldo pele is it pele? ronaldo no no they just had the stalker statue to uh and he didn't no, look I'm anything not a soccer like him. Guy. anyway you know what at some point we'll get back to it um 
Hey, were you uh, were the you at thing the, were you at the Chris? Were you, yeah. Sorry, were you at the Chris Neal game? Did you go? Uh, I was not. So I don't know if they showed this on television or not, but at the end of the ceremony, did you see when he left through the penalty box? Yes, that's what I'm oh, saying. That so, whole energy, it was, it was him was leaving so through great. the box, walking up the stairs, like <laughs> it, like he so, had that whole building just just so, in his hand. I'll tell you, I'll tell you a couple of things that they hit out of the ballpark with when I know Aaron Robinson had a lot to do with it. I'm sure. A lot of people in the Sens organization, the one thing that I thought was really cool when they had all the current senators on the bench and they brought all the old players out and we sat in front of the bench. So you had like Chris Phillips was out at center ice, but you had, you had Van Allen there. You had Vermette there. You had Bonk there. You had all these guys that are part of the past so you had the past in front, the present right there, and then everybody in attendance to to honor somebody and to be part of it. And it was it was very cool how they did it. And I'll say this: I think Philly's been taking some public speaking lessons. Did a pretty good job with the uh, the speech. Not not a lot of uh, not a lot of you knows, not a lot of ums, not a lot of obviouslys. I think he's been secretly taking but- some uh, speaking courses. He was good. You well, you know what? No. And here's the thing with Chris Phillips. He was the most cerebral guy that I interviewed. So when I was ever looking for a 10-second soundbite, it was never Chris Phillips because he was always too smart in his answer that made it like 30 seconds long because he would give you the actual (laughs) whole answer. So I was like, I can't use this, Philly. You're too too smart. He was good. He had a great great speech, really good speech, a couple good jokes. He's very good. But it was totally on point. You know what I wish? I wish all the players, as in former players and teammates, I should say, were sitting at center ice. Because I want, I, yeah. I, I feel like you guys should be, be we're able to close. be seen. Because if eh, you're not close, you're at the back. I, I'm just telling you, as for me, I want the family I and I want all the players who showed up, who flew in, who were there yeah. to sit there as well. That's all. Yeah, I, I liked it. The bench in front, I thought it was good, and then. I don't know. I thought I thought it was very well done. But I was right in my do you remember I said the Sens will come out flat at the beginning and then they should be able oh. to turn it around. Hey, and they by the they way came out and gave up the quick goal. By the way, I deserve a, a betting credit for that game because I took the over. Which uh, I noticed was <laughs> not added into my yearly total. I was the only guy that took the over. You guys, no, oh, it's going to be a low scoring game. I'm like, this yeah, is going over six goals. Game. So get, yeah. uh, I need one no. more credit there on my total. No, no, it's, it can't happen. Um, I, so, Chris, now here's my question for you as a player. Uh, yes. And I remember when Chris Phillips had his number retired, as we're about to wrap up, I apologize, is. Only Curtis Lazar, not Curtis Lazar, my apologies. Uh, Curtis Lazar came out and sat on the bench when Buffalo was in town. And this time it was uh, Luke Richardson that came out to watch because they were obviously teammates. Uh, can we ask the other team to come out? Is that wrong? It's, it's a long ceremony. And at the end of the day, Wally, you're, there's a lot on the line in the game. And it's... It's a tough one. That, that was a. There's nothing on the line. Long... They're the Chicago Blackhawks. Jobs are on the line. Livelihoods are on the line. There's guys' <laughs> careers are on the line. Oh. Hey, when you're on a losing team, for a few guys on that roster, there's a lot on their line. Uh, like, who knows what's going on with some of those guys? I can you sure, but I I'm not gonna. To me, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me. I I'd like to see them come out because. Like that's the, aside from the Hall of Fame, that has to be the ultimate recognition to have your number retired, and I I think that every player in the National Hockey League or every kid dream was like I dream to have my number retired someday, and I think they should help pay respect to all those guys that have paved the way for them to play. That's all. That's just me. Yeah, yeah, that's your opinion. I I get you. I get what you're saying. I, <laughs> I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. I went I'll to, tell you uh, as a I'll tell you yeah. as a player. If I've got a game and I'm trying to get ready for the game and they ask me to go sit on the bench for an hour, I'm not going to be happy about it. <laughs> Especially if I don't know the player and I don't, I wasn't part of anything. I'm like, why am I going out there? 
So that's just me thinking as what those guys on the Chicago Blackhawks were probably thinking in their own minds. Hey, say this, Luke Richardson, we all know this. I'm not telling anybody something they don't know. One of the classiest, best people you ever yeah. know in the game of hockey. It's of course he was out there. That's just the type of guy Luke is. Yeah. Uh, he, what, uh, I just want to like, he's one of the most genuine people you will ever oh. meet. Uh, a yep. huge 100%. Luke Richardson fan. And, me too. And he was supposed to come on our show, but then things got changed and he ended up in Chicago. And so uh, we're working to schedule him to come back on the show and it'll probably be in the summer. But uh, full marks to Luke Richardson. All right. Um, before we go, because we messed this all up at the beginning, um, and I'll get right back to it. Uh, Alex, we're going to throw in some sponsor reads. Uh, as always, this show brought to you by Botano. Go to botano.ca. Uh, download the uh, award-winning app and uh, place your bets. I will say I did bet on Boston losing to the Ottawa Senators, although I picked Boston to win the game. Uh, I don't know if that makes me a hypocrite, but uh, the game starts now with botano.ca. Uh, also by Renfrew Pro. Go to renfrewpro.com. Uh, feel the game if you download them uh, on Instagram. They have a free tape Friday giveaway every Friday. Uh, you can enter there at Instagram, renfrewpro.com. Available all major retailers. They are the ones with the green core. And by BEI, Bonisher Excavating Inc., uh, if you're looking for uh, any kind of employment at the moment in heavy construction, give them a shout. They are looking for all kinds of positions. BonshireExcavating.com, 613-432-1120. Uh, Yorkie, before we go, do you think, uh, and I'll leave it on this, that the Ottawa Senators and General Manager Pierre Dorian will be very busy over the next uh, 10 days, 11 days, whatever it is till the trade deadline, I can't add. I think if they can do a move that is going to be one that's going to help them a little bit now, but more so in the future, yes. I don't know if those deals will be available. So I, I think for sure he'll be inquiring about players, trying to do something. Um, but yeah, for sure. I, I, I think he'll be active. I don't know. I these four. I think these four games for sure, uh, will be a telltale sign of what's about well, to transpire. So, yeah, if you want me, I I think as of today, it's still yeah, it, it's it's murky. It's murky. I think if they won that game, I tweeted this out on the weekend. I said things are going to get really interesting if they won both those games. If they would have won that Boston game, it's you're that much closer. You you bring up the percent the percentages ever so slightly, but now. We'll see. Can, can they can they go off and reel off another five in a row? Maybe, and then maybe we're having a different conversation. Maybe some of the right teams lose, but it's so many things have to go exactly into place for Ottawa Senators to truly be a buyer come de deadline to make their team say, "Hey, we got a chance to really make the playoffs now." So, yeah, to your point, I think the next little while here is going to be very indicative on what they do. You look confused. What's going on? Uh, sorry, Yorkie, I lost you there. Um, all right, I I think that uh, Ottawa is going to make an interesting move down the stretch here. I, I, yeah, I think yeah. we're going to see well, perhaps uh, a top 4D land, but that's an awfully tall ass to do. So yeah, there's like, been a lot of chatter man, about like, waiting like and waiting yeah. until the ownership takes over. I'm not sure that they'll do that. I think they'll go ahead. Yeah. It'll be exciting if they do. If if they do that, I do think it'll be a move. It won't be a rental. It'll be something that that uh, a similar situation to Perenko, a guy that's got a lot of term left that can be yep. part of the solution, part of the future, which to me makes a ton of sense. Absolutely. Well, we'll see if anything happens over the next two days. We'll, we'll be back on Thursday. Uh, and if he's still not too busy, Ian Mendez will be joining us. We'll chat all things Ottawa Senators and a few more news and notes, perhaps about Tim Stutzla yeah. and the continue of the show that he's been able to put on. Uh, Yorkie, we'll see you Thursday, my friend. Take care. Yeah, I'll Thanks be live watching, from everybody. Phoenix. I'll be live from Phoenix, Wally. Can't wait. You're on the. You travel all the time. Hey, I'm jealous. Someone's got to do it. Someone's got to do it. Safe travels. Yeah. Thanks. 
Coming in hot is brought to you by Botano.ca. Please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel to never miss an episode.